Superintendent of Education is a race that historically has not been watched closely, but now more than ever, parents are paying careful attention to who they elect to be in charge of their children. This morning, I spoke with Democrat Lisa Ellis, who will face Ellen Weaver in the general election. All right, so tell me, why are you running for this position? Uh, I'm running for state superintendent of education because our um, public school system is really in crisis right now. We, we need to do what is best for all of our students. Um, and just in the advocacy work that I've done with SC Fred over the last four years, that needle has moved too slowly. We're, we're losing teachers and qualified support staff. Um, every day, and that is what is really hindering um, our student success. And so I feel that in this role, I can maybe move that needle a little bit quicker and work to recruit and retain teachers so that all students in South Carolina have access to a high quality education. And you talked about moving that needle and retaining teachers, but what are some of the other things that you're hoping to do as far as change is concerned? Um, I think we've got to look at work, you know, the, the focus of student success is having a high quality teacher in the classroom. And so really, when we look at how we, um, how schools can affect success is by making sure that that is happening. So, you know, that's the, that's the one issue that we've really got to deal with. And you deal with that in two ways, salary, which is a little bit more difficult because that comes from the General Assembly. But working conditions are what we can completely um, work to change, you know, pretty effective immediately over the last 10, 15 years, um, the, the working conditions that teachers have to, to deal with have just become harder and harder with increased class sizes, with increased paperwork, with what we call hoops to jump through um, to, to, you know, make policy, um, to follow policy. And then I think in the last really year, two years, this, this attack on teachers um, from, from the community and, and you know, just the, the concern that, that teachers are not doing what they're supposed to do, which is untrue. Teachers are trained and effective in what they're doing, and we just need to, to make sure that the public understands that. And talk to me a little bit about your qualifications and experience. It's my understanding that you've been in the classroom while we know your opponent has not. Correct. I've been in, in schools my entire career. I just finished up my 21st year um, in public education in South Carolina. I've worked in um, Richland School District 1, Fairfield County School District, and, and Richland School District 2. And Richland School District 2 for the majority of my um, career, I've been uh, English teacher, that's my, you know, my background. So I've taught all levels of English, um, speech, journalism, media production. I'm currently the director of student activities at Blythewood High School, which is a hybrid role is how I like to describe it, where half the day I'm working with students and teaching leadership and service. And the other half I'm working with students and planning and implementing school-wide events, um, including spirit weeks, community service projects, all of that stuff. And it's a job that I absolutely uh, uh, love and, and you know, look forward to going to every day. So all of my experiences in schools, I'm a classroom teacher. I know what the classroom is like. I know what it needs. And that's why I feel that my perspective is really important at this um, level of superintendent of education. And talk to me a little bit more about your role with SC for Ed. You know, a lot of teachers definitely know who you are. They've seen your face. Talk about the work you do there. So SC for Ed was created four years ago, honestly, as a closed Facebook group for teachers. Um, you know, we talk about the fact that even though as teachers, we are founded by humans all the time, it's a very, very isolating profession because you know you're not around other adults and so it was really created as a community for teachers to collaborate with each other um, to talk about you know issues and concerns and it very quickly turned into a, a grassroots advocacy movement because what we were seeing was my frustrations were the same frustrations that were happening statewide and we realized that that was sort of you know why teachers were leaving were because of the lack of that teacher voice. And so I think SC for Ed has really given teachers an opportunity to use their voice uh, and to fight for their profession. And I'm so proud of the work 
that we've done and the fact that, that teachers are willing to stand up and say, no, you're, you're not going to treat me and my students like this anymore. We deserve better. And talk to me about your opponent. We discovered yesterday that Ellen Weaver is who you're going to face now, which may have been a surprise to a lot of people because Manis had quite a bit of support, but evidently not enough to get through. What makes you better than Ellen Weaver as superintendent of education? Uh, I have the, the education experience. Like I said earlier, I've spent, you know, my entire professional career in public schools. Um, you know, I've worked with teachers in the last four years in traveling the state to figure out how we can improve the profession. Um, you know, I, I see the students every day and see what they need. And so I just think that that classroom experience, that working directly with students who are our ultimate stakeholder in the public education system, I think that experience is really what is needed at this um, level of, of work for public education. Talk to me about parents. Obviously, parents uh, have huge concerns with who they're putting their children with every day. And as the, the head honcho, so to speak, of that arena, you would have the role of working with parents as even a teacher does, but you're on a more large scale with more authority, I guess. Um, your opponent, Ms. Weaver, talks about parent involvement all the time. And I noticed you've mentioned that recently parents have been kind of coming at teachers. How would you work with parents to ensure a successful school year for every student in this state? I think that that's a great question. You know, when we look at a, a successful student, we look at it in terms of a partnership, right? There's, and I try to explain to people that it's like a triangle, right? You've got the, the student at one point of the triangle, you've got the parents at one point of the triangle, and then you've got the teacher or the school at the third point. And all of those have to work together to help that student be successful. You know, when, when you're in early childhood and elementary, the parents and the teachers have more of a bigger role because they are trying just the age of the student you know, trying to keep them focused and all of that. But as the, the student goes through education and as they get to, you know, my level as high school, the, the responsibility needs to be more and more on the, the student because we're preparing that student to be a successful adult, right? And to take responsibility. And so I think that what has, has happened over the last, I don't know, I've been in education 21 years, but really in the last 15 years, is we've seen sort of a, a where the teacher has become the main responsible one for a, a student's education. You know, the fault is on the teacher if the student is not successful. Um, the fault is on the teacher for not doing all of that. And that's not how education works. And so I think that we all want, teachers want their students to be successful. Parents want their students to be successful. And I think it's that dialogue that we've got to, um, you know, that we've got to continue to push is that we all want students to be successful, but we've got to have a relationship to make sure that that happens. And so, you know, teachers need to be willing to reach out and have conversations with, you know, students and parents, but parents also need to be willing to come in and see what's going on in the schools. You know, we talk about the fact that, that we, we laugh about the fact as teachers that we, we beg for parents to come in and be involved and we beg for them to, to volunteer and to attend you know, parent-teacher nights and all of that. But we live in a society that that can be really tough to do depending on personal circumstances. Um, and so I think that schools have really worked hard to open lines of communication and we just got to get back to where we trust each other. We trust that the teachers are doing what is in the best interest of the students. We trust that the parents are doing what is in the best interest of their, of their children. And I think that because of a small minority of very vocal people who are not getting correct information, I think that has what has been lost is that parents want what is best for their children. Teachers want what is best for their students. Tell me how you would work with Republican voters if you were elected. Obviously, there are a lot of Republican voters in this state. Uh, South Carolina seems to be pretty red. So if you're elected as a Democrat, how are you going to work with those Republicans to find common ground and solutions? Because um, as you may know, yourself and your opponent have very different visions for public education in this state. 
So I, I think the common ground is always, I am always going to do what is in, best, in the best interest of all students in South Carolina. Um, you know, I, I have the, the privilege every day of looking at students directly, having those conversations, building those relationships, watching these students grow into amazing human beings. And that is always going to be at the forefront of any decisions or any conversations that come out of the Department of Education, any conversations that we have with legislators and, and the governor, it's always going to be what is in the best interest of all of our students in South Carolina. And I, I find it hard to believe that regardless of what aisle, you, you know, what party you follow, that there's not that, that anyone is like, oh no, I don't, I don't want to take care of our children. You know, there's not people out there that believe that. And so I think as long as we continue to put the focus on what is in the best interest of all students in South Carolina, all children in South Carolina, then that opens up a pretty effective dialogue, um, regardless of who who I'm talking to. And how confident are you that you're going to ultimately come out on top in this election or in this race? Obviously, uh, as I noted earlier, South Carolina seems to be quite red. So you have quite a challenge ahead, it looks like. Um, how confident are you? Well, to quote, quote our state motto, while I breathe, I hope, right? Um, I, you know, I really feel that when if people pay attention um, and if they really think critically about what is best for our state, you know, it's not just about whether or not you have children in schools or not. When we talk about public education, we talk about it as, as a, a pillar of society, right? I personally don't have, you know, my own children. I have a dog. Um, but I still recognize the value of public education because when I go out and, and you know, am in public situations, I'm, I'm working with people who have graduated from public schools. So we've got to look at it as you know, a pillar to a society that we want to make great. Um, and so I just, you know, I think that that's got to be the focus. And I think people need to really think critically about you know, which candidate is going to work to really improve public education and you know, which candidate is not. Is there anything else you'd like to add that we did not touch on? I, I think you have covered it. Those are some great questions. I appreciate it. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time and best of luck with the campaign. Thank you so much. Take care, Jackson. Right. I will be posting an interview with Ellen Weaver soon, so stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, to learn more about Lisa Ellis, go to lisaellisforscschools.org. In Greenville, I'm Jackson Gosnell reporting.